today to <clears throat> talk to you about the Atlantic's best kept secret. And I'm going to try to bring this to you um, from the ocean's point of view, which is Oceano Azul Foundation model, because the ocean is invisible to most of us, to most of society, but uh, we need to put things in context, and that's what I'm going to try to do first to you. And the context is that in the last five years, things have changed massively in terms of the amount of information we have available to decisions about what's happening to the planet. All these reports that you see here from the uh, intergovernmental panels of climate and biodiversity from the United Nations bring all the evidence together showing us the dimension of the human impact on the planet. And if we were to compile all this information and put it in a simple, clear, and very, very understandable message to us all, here it is. It's not rocket science. We are heading towards the apocalypse, and we know that we are heading towards the apocalypse because we have the evidence. We have the science that shows us what's going on. And we don't have 200,000 problems to solve. We have two. We have a climate emergency that we need to tackle. But less known to all of us, we have a species extinction crisis. And so the planet is changing fundamentally in its chemistry because of pollution, because of CO2, because of climate change, in its physics. But also we are changing the planet in its biology, in life, in nature. We are making nature scarce today because we are impacting the planet. And we can bring you lots of evidence around this, and let me just give you a few examples, and where the ocean comes into this equation. The ocean absorbs more than 90% of the excess heat that greenhouse gases create. Without oceans, the planet would not be inhabitable anymore. This gives you a sense of the importance. But also because of the CO2 that we are putting up, a quarter, at least, of that is landing in the ocean, and the ocean is becoming more acidic. So it's warming, it's becoming more acidic, and because of pollution and warming, it's deprived of oxygen in many, other, in many places. And truly, the evidence could not be clearer. If you look at everything blue here on this chart is values below average, everything red is values, values above average. So things are speeding up, all the records are being broken, and the situation is totally out of control in terms of the climate. And, of course, all this heat goes into the ocean, and these heat waves that you see here all happen in this century and are becoming more and more frequent a bit all over the place. If you look at the levels of CO2 in the atmosphere of the last 800,000 years, there it is, our human footprint, the result of our industrial evolution. We are changing the planet at a speed that was not seen before. These levels have seen before, two to three uh, million years ago, when the planet was two to three degrees warmer, but sea levels were 15 to 25 meters higher. This is the kind of change that is coming because of the changes that we are bringing to the planet. And of course, all this CO2 that goes in the ocean is changing the chemistry of the ocean, and this will turn the ocean in, in, the, in the decades to come more difficult to be um, housing species such as many of the organisms that depend on a stable ocean. Recently, you understand that even some big predators cannot dive deep enough anymore because there's not enough oxygen down there to power their muscles because of lack of oxygen. Less known is the species dimension of this crisis in the ocean. And uh, this paper was fundamental in showing us that only around 13% of the ocean can be considered wild, can be considered intact from the big whales into the bacteria. And so the dimension of the scale of these impacts is what matters for us to find solutions. Um, more than two thirds of the, the ocean have been impacted by multiple um, factors. And so we are fundamentally changing the planet fundamentally changing 
the existence of life on this planet, and the ocean is not an exception. In some of the populations, we are managing today less than 10% of what existed when we started industrial fishing around 100 years ago. And so this is the kind of evidence that again brings us to this simple conclusion. But there is something different also today that matters to all of us, is that we cannot claim any more ignorance. We cannot claim anymore that we don't know what we are doing. So we have a choice. We can change because we know. And this is very important because also, again, we don't have 200,000 things to change. We have two things to change. We know that in order to tackle these two challenges, one, we need to decarbonize our economy now. We need to stop putting CO2 in the atmosphere and greenhouse gases in the atmosphere now. And we also need to value nature because we don't destroy nature because we are bad people. We destroy nature because our incentives in the economy are the wrong ones and drive us into this space. And let me bring you a bit the um, evidence or some, some thoughts about why or what is stopping us from destroying nature if we know, because we do know, we have this evidence and scientists are showing us about what we are doing. And let me bring you some of the ocean creatures that we can find in many of the oceans. This pair of lionfish in Indonesia were hunting for small fish. And so here you'll see the names of some of these species. This seahorse <clears throat> is from uh, Portugal. Uh, you see this um, scorpion fish from the Azores, this school of parrotfish from the Maldives, batfish, this hawkfish, this pair of lizardfish, this frogfish, or this tiger shark. If you, if you listen carefully to the names of all these animals, tiger, hawk, bat, they are all land animals. There is a fundamental disconnect between us and the ocean because we don't live there. We don't see these animals. And so we bring what we know from land into the ocean. And we even bring some of the names of objects such as jewels or fans or pipe or a feather duster, a hammer. And we need to solve this, okay? And let me try to explain the fundamental change here by bringing you this image. When you look at this top predator of uh, Earth where we connect, the things that we think about when we see this image are wildlife. This line represents wildlife. We consider that animal an individual. Many of those lions have names. And we consider them the top exponent, if you want, of nature and representative of nature. And now let me bring you exactly the same example of the ocean, the top predator of the ocean. In this case, a tuna could be a shark, could be a billfish. Well, things change a bit if we ask people to describe what they see with that image, because for us, that's food, that's a resource, and our goal is to extract as much biomass as we can in a sustainable way from this animal. And this is this, the disconnect that we need to solve, and this is how we are going to do it or we're trying to do it. So let me talk to you a little bit now about the way forward. Um, a fundamental way forward is that we need to protect nature and we need to protect nature now, and we have the tools to do, those, to do that. Marine protected areas work. We know that when we protect the ocean, the ocean responds. In spite of all these impacts, we'll have more fish, we have bigger fish, we have more species, we have more intact systems in place if we protect the ocean. But in fact, we have protected less than two to 3% of the ocean without fishing, without impacts. But it works. This area 20 years ago was a desert when the communities decided to rally around and protect their ocean. And now is what you see here. It's a beacon of tourism in the coast of Mexico, Cabo Pumo. The Azores is leading the way as well, and I'm just 
going to try to bring to you a bit of what is being done by the government of Azores with a program called Blue Azores, a partnership with the Ocean Azul Foundation, with the Weight Institute and many organizations in the, in the region. And I'm going to show you a small video about this program. Este é o Mar dos Açores. O nosso maior tesouro que vive, que mexe, respira e nos inspira. Um bem que nos molda e fortalece, que alimenta sustenta e engrandece. Esta nossa enorme riqueza, porém, está hoje ameaçada. Cada maré é mais poluída, as suas águas mais desertas, o nosso alimento mais escasso. A fonte que parecia indestrutível e inesgotável é, afinal, finita e vulnerável. Mas se agirmos hoje, podemos ajudar o nosso mar a recuperar e a voltar ao que era. Está nas nossas mãos tornar esta possibilidade numa realidade. Blue Azores é um programa que tem como objetivo proteger o mar dos Açores e que usa a ciência a educação e a economia para promover e valorizar o nosso património natural. Uma iniciativa que convoca todos os açorianos para o uso sustentável do mar. Proteger 30% do mar dos Açores através de áreas marinhas protegidas, com pelo menos 15% totalmente protegidas, promover o uso responsável dos recursos e dinamizar empregos azuis na economia do mar são medidas fundamentais para que possamos viver na nossa geração e nas futuras uma relação próspera e sustentável com o oceano. Porque nós somos mar. E o mar precisa de nós. O tempo de atuar é Okay, I think you got the message. And um <clears throat> And so we are using science and exploration and the fact that we are not only on one of the most amazing places on the planet, but one of the places where science is thriving. The University of Azores has been leading these studies for more than 20 to 30 years now, and all this information is being put forth in this program so that we can reveal, if you want, the best kept secret in the Atlantic, which is it's possible to change. It's possible to have a different way of development it's possible to do these three things, which are very important. To protect through conservation, to promote through education, and to value through the economy, the blue natural capital, and nature. And so the government of Azores has committed in the last UN Ocean Conference in Lisbon to protect 30% of its sea by 2023, by this year. And so the government is uh, doing uh, lots of work with the communities, lots of work with science, lots of work in engaging all the information to achieve this goal, which is going to be transformational for the whole North Atlantic, not just for Azores, not just for Europe, because the protection of this capital that exists here, the protection of nature, the recovery of that nature, will allow also the Azores to be at the front load, at the front running on a uh, blue economy, on blue jobs, on creating new avenues for development, that instead of destroying nature, protect nature, that instead of carbonizing the economy, allow us to move into the solutions. And this is do, done again through science, but not only through science, through engaging the society, through bringing the stakeholders into the conversation, and through building the solutions together 
with those stakeholders so that in the end, the network of MPAs that the Azores is going to produce will stay here forever, will stay here for society and for the future. And we are bringing the best standards in, so again, through science to show what type of conservation can be done and how, what are the goals. And the goal here is to protect the whole system and not just parts of it, to keep this system wild, to keep this system intact and to allow with that to solve one of the most challenging aspects of our days, which is how can we have a healthy ocean, but also how can we have healthy communities, a healthy economy, a healthy human development. And in the end, this is all about these animals that you can see in this uh, place that we refer to as the Galapagos of Europe, if you want, because it truly is. We are on top of volcanoes as we speak now today, but the ocean down there, you just go a few miles from shore and you can still see this in the water. But we are at this crossroads where the uh, actions that we do today, the decisions that we do today, and the bold decision that the Azores has taken to protect its ocean now, it's a leading example of the solutions that we need to bring in order to solve the challenges that we face. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>